three, two, one. Hi everyone! It's a. Uh, it's basically. Oh my. Hi! Okay. Um, today we're going to be making a video, and um, hopefully my character does not keep continuously keep looking that way. Today I'm going to be making a video on uh, a gameplay for Legend of Arceus. I will be showing gameplay. Raw footage. But first, I will be doing something that I don't normally do on YouTube. I, well, not normally. I would never think of doing at all because I would usually do it on my Instagram account. So, I started to do it on my Instagram account because first, I, first of all, I like to read without recording or anything like that. I just, it's a personal thing. But I decided to start to, um read the Bible, and ever since then, I wanted to share my my experience, well, I don't know how to, a uh, different word to say, journey with it. It, uh, it sounds so cheesy and cringy, but say journey, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's a bit <laughs> cringy word, but uh, I just have to use it. My journey with the Bible, and uh, reading it. I originally stopped reading the Bible around August, I believe. Yeah, August or something like that last year, or maybe further than that. I can't remember. But all I know is that uh, I'm returning back to it because, first of all, I'm gonna make this clear. Being a Christian isn't easy. If you must know, it is quite difficult. There is a reason for that. I'm letting go a lot of sinful acts that I used to do. Personal sinful acts that I used to do. Whenever I get the courage to actually talk about personal things that I used to do that are sinful as a um, video uh, that Christians tend to do on um, explaining how they got into Christianity, how um, they got in contact with God, and all that stuff, all that good stuff, I will be doing that whenever I can. Because as of right now, I am not really prepared for that. Mentally, I'm really not prepared, to be honest with you all. I'm just, uh, just, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm just not that great position to do that. In great position to do that. So, I'm reading the Bible so far. I've been praying. I've been doing what I have to do. It's not because I am forced to do this. Now, don't, don't assume that oh, Christians must be forced to do this. Why are you guys doing this? No, we don't do this because of being forced, forced into. Not like... Um, atheism forces you to be that Satanism, I mean like evil things get you into a lot of evil way of thinking draws you in into becoming an atheist you may not understand that honestly, I don't know how to explain it. the atheist mindset is basically evolutionist and I don't agree with that ideology it has caused a lot of people into living a very distraught life depression, anxiety, questioning your existence, a, a lot of bad things, and I, 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 oof, oof. I, I don't really, don't hate atheists at all, don't think that I hate you guys, no, I, I don't, I just, um, don't agree with your ideologies, or anything like that, or any way of thinking, so, it's unfortunate that I have to bring it up, but, yeah, um, being a Christian is a choice. A Satanist is not a choice. An atheist is not a choice. A Catholic is not a choice. It's because, etc. All religions is not a choice. You may not know this, but the devil works in many, many ways. And when he wants you to not believe, let's say, God, what atheists do, and lets you believe that a rock or a fish created or is what we are that we're mammals he will do he will go to that extent he will do anything or is he the father of lies the fathers of deception 
father of evil. So he'll do anything. And if you're an atheist and you get upset over what I said, then I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you upset. I'm just literally going based off the knowledge I have accumulated over the years. So I'm not trying to be a, 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 a freaking terrible person towards you. I'm really not. I'm just explaining things here. If you disagree with me, fine. Go go right ahead. I have no problem with you disagreeing with me. Seriously, it's your choice. But um, I'm going to be talking about it. So, the father of lies sure likes to uh, drag people in. You are forced to become evil. He forces you into it. You may have this delusion that you have a choice and freedom in that type of lifestyle, but you don't. You really don't. You're just literally doing what he wants you to do. Being a Christian, you get freedom. You get utter, complete freedom. And yes, I, I, am, I am smiling. You get utter, complete freedom being a Christian. You get complete freedom. You have a choice. So, this was a choice. I chose to be a Christian. I chose to walk the path. And I chose to read the Bible. And I chose to continuously keep going and worship the Lord. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just... At times... For me, for instance, existence, existence, like example, for instance, it can be difficult for us who are starting off because of sinful thoughts, uh, you know, the enemy sure likes to pull you in out of it. And it, it gets hard. It, it really does. There are some Christians that just um, end up Ended up breaking on the ground and crying and whatnot. But throughout this entire thing, you may view it as something, oh, that's a cult way. No, it's not. It, it really isn't. I'm, I'm being genuinely honest, and this is not a cult way, no. It's through the process. It's a process of healing. To put it a simple way. A simple way for me to explain it. It's a process of healing. You're letting go of all the sin that you've committed. You're forgiving yourself. You're actually truly loving yourself. In the most beautiful way with the Lord. By your side with you. He's helping you out. And that's the thing that many people need now these days. They really do need God. They need to let go of all the selfishness. The selfish ways you... you you're like glued into that you've been brainwashed into believing it's such a righteous way when it's not. You need to let go of uh, a lot of sinful ways, a lot of sinful th stuff. See, when a Christian tells you to repent on your sins, we're not telling you this to be a douche. Oh, I said such a crush word. <laughs> no, trust me, I, I'm <laughs> it ain't. I tell you, it's not easy. I have to let go of, of cursing, cussing, cussing, excuse me, cussing. And it's not easy, I'm gonna tell you this, but the more I continue on, the more it's good. It feels good letting go of certain bad words that we used to flung out of my mouth all the darn time. Now I use fancy words and I feel so great. <laughs> I feel really great. Replacing um, the word B with um, s uh, tramp. It's a better way to term than using a B word. Um, tramp, or if you're a whore, you're a whore. I mean, like, that's a literal word. It's not a, cur a cuss word. I've been replacing all my, my cussing words with other things. But some words I have been, um, it's getting me a struggle. But I will do it. Mm -hmm. So, that's an example. That's bad behavior that I have. That I'm trying to fix. And going well. Honestly, it's going well. 
And um, I just wanted to uh, um, explain that that yes, it's just an example of, of it being difficult, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. It's honestly worth it. I, you have to experience being a, a, a Christian walking through that path to understand how I feel, because I have no re- no idea how to express this feeling that I I get that I am in. It's just all I can say one word is happiness. Through all all that struggle, all that sadness, it's pure happiness, relieved to letting go of things that destroy us as humans. Just really jacks us up so if you don't want to listen to me reading the bible you can skim through this i will be setting a timestamp in which i am completely finished and i will be putting a timestamp in which i am about to read the bible i also um I also will be reading uh, chapter 34 of the Bible because I have been reading it off uh, off of my um, off. I was originally going to read every each chapter while I record it, but that wasn't going well because Instagram doesn't work on my phone that well. <laughs> I have issues with it. So I have been reading off camera. Off camera, like, a, like any other normal person would do. And it's been going well. And if you ever get into a point that you're a Christian and you're like, oh, it's not working for me or anything like that, let me tell you this. It's not working on you because you're not, do- you're not doing the effort. You're not doing the work. God can't, you know, he can't help you if you're not helping yourself. Simple as that. You have to. I, I, some Christians have been saying it a lot, and it's true. You have to force yourself to read the Bible again. If you're a Christian and you've stopped reading the Bible like I have, you have to force yourself. There's a reason for that. It's because through the process of us doing this entire journey, we're healing. And since we're healing, we're getting let go of, uh, okay, let's see, bugs. Bugs within our body, in our flesh, our body, our our, our, um, vessel. We're letting go of a lot of bugs. So since we're letting go of a lot of bugs, it takes time. And it's not going to happen like, like that like real easily it's going to take time and within those times of gap of you progressing more and more you are going to end up having times in which you're like oh don't read the bible don't don't do that don't do that because in that pause a minute the enemy will get into you not into you but will be sneaking and slithering in your in, in your spiritual dome in your area and you don't want that you know you, you really don't so the enemy does not the, these satanists and pagans they do not stop uh doing satanic rituals and ritualistic uh, acts to uh, uh on attacking christians they will not stop because that's what lucifer has set their goal to be as and us we will not you should not stop reading the bible and praying to god and praying for those in need like if you're if you're lost in prayer like if you don't know how to properly pray the bible has a uh they have pages um chapters on the back if you have the king james version which i highly recommend everyone to get if you go on the back i don't know if it's uh you have a new one or old one whichever one it is they're going to be have pages in which it tells you and uh pages in which it helps you out on praying answers question doubts etc or if you have drug addictions it's all in the bible i'm not kidding you it's it's really amazing so it's all there he explains he talks to you you have to read it yourself sit down there and read it and take it in so um it's been 14 minutes we're in the 14 minute second mark of the video (laughs) wow I've been rambling. I've been talking too much. I just, I uh, just, uh, when I'm talking about the Bible, it's something very, very important to me, and um, I actually like it a lot. So, in love with it. But yeah, if you ever um, get into that and um, like me, it, it, the enemy won't stop. As simple as that. Um, 
just read the Bible. You have to force yourself to read the Bible. When you force yourself to read the Bible at that stage, that's when it starts to help out a lot. Anything the enemy does, you are going to feel it. You're going to feel it emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Three things. They will attack you while you are reading the Bible, while you are going back to God. Not back to God, but while you're going back to the Bible. <laughs> So, yeah, just just wanted to say that before I, I um, start reading it, okay? Um, but I'm in chapter 34. I'm honestly surprised I got to Exodus 33, 12, uh, page 124, and we're at the stage in which Moses makes new tablets, uh, at the area of Moses making new tablets. He has to do it because uh, <laughs> he broke it. He broke the ones that the Lord gave him. Now the reason for that is because the children of Israel decided to sin. They sh they started to worship this uh give me a second. I They started to worship Give me a second. Y'all. Okay, there we go. I found it. Um, they started to worship a calf, a molten calf. The children of Israel sat down and had the audacity to tell Aaron that since Moses is taking his time, taking way too much time for them because they want to be impatient and want to rebel, they, uh, they, they, they really honestly thought this was a great idea, which I was like, what, what are you doing? Moses said to wait patiently, but they didn't want to wait. So, they told Aaron, hey, um, you know what, Gr um, can you make us gods, in which uh, we want to, um, you know, display us as we are gods. Uh, the term of me explaining this is not very easy, so don't ask me to explain what the heck they just said, because I am not good at understanding some of the historical ancient language <laughs> not language but uh, uh their way of talking it's just uh it's a bit difficult for me to understand it at times but i can't really explain it but i can understand it i understand what they were trying they were saying like when they were asking the best way i can explain it as is this they were asking aaron to um aaron since they were doubting God himself and Moses since Moses decided to take his time and listen to what the Lord has uh, appointed him in doing so he uh, they decided to uh, they, they were like you know what let's just make up a God that way we can worship him instead of God instead of Jesus you know God God Almighty Yeshua and uh, Mo God found out he already knew he knows he already knew what they were doing and he told Moses about it. Moses about it. Moses was like, that's not good. That is not good. So as he went downstairs and he saw them butt naked. Yeah. He saw them butt naked worshipping the clay, the clay figure. And Moses asked for an explanation. He got so upset that he broke the two tablet, the tablets that the Lord gave him. And now he has to remake them now. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame him. He got so upset. I mean, would you be okay with anyone being butt naked in front of you, worshipping a piece of object? And an object, a material that just came out of nowhere. Like, this is how it started. Aaron, um, Aaron did what they asked him to do. The, he told them, give me your, your earrings, your jewelry, and um, let me break it apart and uh, let's see what happens. So he broke it apart and a figure, uh, 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 a figure came out, a clay figure. And that's when they, they started to go repel and uh, go ballistically uh, whack, wacky. Do you think anyone would sit down there, especially a Christian? Um, uh, w would you be okay with that? No, right? Please tell me no. Please. No, right? 
Okay, good. Um, and they decided to do that. It's just messed up. If you see, if you see that visually, you'd be like, "What the heck, man? That's not good. What the heck are you doing? Like, what in the world are you doing, there, buddy?" So since they did that, now Moses has to make new tablets. Oh, jeez. I feel bad for Moses. He had to go through all the struggle. And now the children of Israel, they shouldn't have rebelled. They should have just been patient. Sit down there. Wait patiently. He's doing something really good. And you want to throw all that away to worship another God? A maid of God? See, do you... Do you see what I mean? Oh my gosh, now I'm saying this. Okay, this ties in with the people that go around uh, leaving God behind. And they start to uh, do yoga. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to bring yoga up because that's just going to be a long story. And I will need to research into that. For I can correctly tell you all how it ties in into Satanism. Uh, but if you want me to tell you the simplest term... You're opening your third eye, and um, you're opening your third eye, and you're opening your body spiritually for demons to go inside of you, for you can get demonically possessed. That's why you see people who do extreme like yoga in itself; they have seizures, or you see them in videos, caught them doing some weird stuff, or their mind is just not there. Yeah, that's uh, that's demonic possession. They're being demonically oppressed first, and then they're being demonic, demonically oppressed. It can't happen. So, that's the simplest way I can uh, answer that question. If you want more detail on it, uh, you're going to have to um, look up Vigilant Christian Brother Mario. He uh, explains what yoga is. I am hoping his video is still up. I really am, because... Um, as of right now, Canada is getting currently extremely, extremely communistically screwed. And they just uh, fortunately banned um, Christianity. Yeah. And no one hasn't talked about this. No one hasn't said anything about this. So, yeah. Christianity um, has been taken down over there. And that's worrisome because Mara is a Christian. And there are Christians over there. So, I don't know what else to even say, but to just please pray for Mario. The brother really needs it. Um, he explains what yoga is and an explanation. There are other Christians that explain yoga, but I can only go to Mario or uh, Mario himself. For you to further get into why yoga is bad and satanic... You have to read the Bible, to be honest with you all. Once you read the Bible and you start to pray and you start to get into Christianity, you start to listen to Christians that know things, know a lot more because you're, like, getting into it. It's fine. Not everyone's going to be, no, like, not everyone's going to be informed and know everything. You'll start to, um, notice how, why yoga is bad. And the term. You were like, oh, okay, now I get it. Oh, okay, th that makes sense. It just, it'll start to, like, grab on like that. It'll, like, you'll start to understand it faster. But, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to, uh, put the, excuse me, I'll be right back. But before that, I was, oh, shoot. Discussing that. Okay, now I see what the heck makes my um, recording play. Every time I press the space bar, it just basically plays the uh, thing. My recording. That's not good. That is not good. I'm just gonna have to see if I can use my um, my arrows to uh, move like a space bar or something. Oof. The... The... Ch in which... Which I am in. And... Let me see if this plays. Yeah, it's still playing. Freak. Wow, this sucks. So, I am gonna be screwed here. <laughs> I'm gonna be screwed. Ha! I guess I'm gonna have to, um... Just leave it at that and, um... Leave my note right here at that because I don't know what else to say. I'm just gonna have to type down this down while you guys just stare at me type. I'm sorry. I really don't know what else to do. It just keeps playing 
even though I don't want it to play. Huh. Oh, the struggle. But before that number, I was supposed to. Okay, I am back. Uh, well, y you know, um, hi, yeah. Uh, I was just uh, typing down what I have to do. That way, you guys can. Uh, know. Anyway, um, let's uh, start reading the Bible. Um, hold on. There, there we go. Um, okay. Chapter thirty-four. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew, hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. Oh, before I continue on, I want to also uh, make it clear that I may pass the limit of three chapters because when I read the Bible, I get so immersed into it that I don't even know when I stop. So, yeah, um, originally I go by reading three, but yeah. I have no problem with it, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez, my character's head is moving the other way around. Okay. Okay, this is much better. Okay. So now I present thyselves there to me in the top of the mountain, mount, and no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that, before that mount. And he who hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up the, unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant, in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and sin that will be that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let me, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is, it is a stiff-necked people, imparting our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant, covenant, before all thy people, all thy people, I will do marvels, marvels, such as have not been done in all earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe that which I command thee this day, behold, I drive out before thee the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites. Take heed to thyself, lest thou, ma lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, but ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their grooves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a war, a war, a warring, warring. I think it says warring or warring. I am sorry, but I'm gonna butcher butcher this word. Warring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, loving other gods. Loving other gods, but but God Himself is a great sin. Oh, right. If you're asking, hey, why don't you do the gaming's games first? Um, 
instead of reading the Bible. Well, see, the Bible is actually more important than gaming, so yeah. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring, a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. It is true, they are whoring themselves. I mean, like, Moses just saw the children of Israel, the rebellious, one, rebellious ones, basically butt naked, whoring themselves onto a darn statue, materialistic thing. That's just disgusting. Thou shalt make thee no, mo no molten gods, the feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee in the name, I mean, in the time of the month, Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine. Don't you type down and say, Always oh, interesting how the Bible references the matrix. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. Yes. Mm, yes, I already understand. It mentions the matrix, but it's not what you think it is. And every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep that is male, womb. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. Yes, I know the word ass is in the Bible. I was actually surprised too. I'm being serious. I was really genuinely surprised that the word ass was in the Bible. I had some time to really think down there. It made me laugh though. But I was like, wow. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck, his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days. So this is the covenant. I'm in a covenant renewed right now. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest shall rest and an earing time in the harvest thou shalt rest and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat's harvest and feast of in gathering at the year's end excuse me thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the lord god the god of israel excuse me for I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders, neither shall any man desire thy land. When thou shalt go up to Pir before the Lord thy God thrice in the year, thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the firstfruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, these words. For after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. See, God had to, um, once again, um, make the new covenant because Moses actually made God repent with his anger. Yeah. Kind of shocking i'm being serious that was he made god moses made god think about it he made an almighty being repent of his anger towards the children of israel take that in he made him repent yeah that's why he's saying the covenants again. The, uh, the new things. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. That's how the Ten Commandments was born. The, 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 the ones that we go by. <laughs> oh, Matushi. Uh, so, <sighs> yeah, the fact that he sta he stayed there for 40 nights and 40 days without drinking or eating is just maddening. 
The fact that he did that, man. Props to Moses. He was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. So, before this, before him breaking the tablets, the Lord made it clear that he will not be shown at all. You can never see God's face. The reason for that is because if you look at his face directly, you will be turned to stone. It is very mentioned. It's No, not t- turned to stone. You will die, basically. You will blow up. I'll be honest. You're going to blow up, bro. You're going to... You're going to blow up. So, I have no idea. I really don't know why you can't see the Lord's face. I, I don't know. I, I think people have answers for that, possibly. But yeah, I, I really don't know why you can't see the Lord's face. All I know is that um, um, you will only be able to see the back of him. Like his hair, his back, and everything. And it came to pass when Moses... Um, And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. So yeah, they feared him. Yeah, that's what happens when you when you turn to a super saiyan. You shall fear a super saiyan. He's like Goku, but on um, super crack, bro. Like Moses didn't even need to be. Uh, what these eight, what these Satanists like to do, like, oh, you have to be a god, you're a god yourself. No, Moses wasn't even a god, and people were afraid of him. Yeah, beat that. <laughs> and Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And, bef- and afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Sinai, until Moses and till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off, until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Now, now that I'm reading more to it, I get the feeling that since Moses was the first one to actually see his face, I think since he saw God, it basically, uh, all of God's beauty just smacked his human face and he's just like, wow. Now his face is just uh, recovering from all that beautiful sparkles. That's all over his face. I, 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 that's the only way I can explain it because <laughs> I don't know myself. I can only explain what I uh, like. I can only understand what I can. But yeah, uh, that's why he has a ve- uh, he puts on a veil. But uh, the fa- oh, another thing I noticed is that but the fact that he Moses survived those forty days. Forty days. That's a, that's that's wonderful. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, and the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face until he went to speak with them. Chapter 35. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words of which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do. It should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you on an holy day a Sabbath of the rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from young an offering unto the Lord, whosoever of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and the silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins and shittim's woods, 
and oil for the light and spices for Antonian oil and for the sweet in, in incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for an ephod and for the breastplate and every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded. I also wanted to explain that the reason why I'm also reading the Bible in this way first before getting into the honestly I'm gonna have to um hmm, now that I'm thinking about it <laughs> I think I just make a um, possibly if I do think of it I may end up making a separate video making gameplay just being Pokemon Legend Arceus gameplay and making a bubble video of me just reading the Bible or just fusing it together because I know how the viewership happens when it comes to people reading the Bible I'm not saying I'm trying to uh, uh, make a con or something like that like a like, I'm doing something mischievous. I'm not trying to do mischievous things. I really want people to know about the Bible and listen to the words of God. But, you know, you can't force everyone. You can't force them. Which is all right. Um, I don't know what I'm saying now. Okay, now I'm confusing myself. Oof. Anyway, um, what am I saying? Oof. Uh, okay. I think I'm getting tired already. Um, but also, I'm reading the Bible because I have to, um, I have to, like I said before, I have to force myself to read the Bible, and plus, uh, today's the next day in which I have to read the Bible three chapters sure I can continue on. And onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod. And for the breastplate. And every wise heart among you shall come, and make all that the Lord hath commanded. The turban saw his tent and his covering, excuse me, his ta his tatches and his boards, his bars, his pillars and his sockets, the ark and the and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves, staves and um and all his vessels and the shoe bread. The candlestick also for the lights and his f furniture and his lamps with the oil for the lights. And the essence altar and his staves, staves. And the anointing oil and the sweet in incense and the hanging for the door at the entering in of the tabernacle. Tabernacle? I think tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering. With his brass and great his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot. The hangings of the court, his pillars in their sockets, and the hanging up toward the door of the court. The pins of the tabernacle, tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords. Pegs. <laughs> the clouds of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest, priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's off a Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, and brought bracelets, and earrings, and rings, and ta tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man mean every man that offered 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 an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and finely kneading goat hair and red skins of rams and hydra skins brought them. Everyone that did offer, did offer an offering of silver, offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom, oh my head. With whom was found shittim wood, 
before any work, any work of the service, brought it. And all the women that were wise, hearted, did spin with their hands, and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple, and of scarlet and of fine linen, and all the, all the women whose heart stirred them up, in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx, stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplates, and spice, and oil for the lights, and for the anointing oil, and for the sweet essence. And, and the children of Israel brought wi a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hands of Moses. Basically, volunteer. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezal, Bezal, the son of Uri, Ur, I think it's Uri or Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of wor workmanship and to devise curious works, to works in gold and in silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of wood, to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart, that he may teach both he and, Aho and Ahol Aholib, the son of Ahis, Ahis Amak, of the tribe of Dan. Them, had it, them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer embroidier, embroidier, in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver and of the weaver even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. I know that some YouTubers, some Christian YouTubers, like to just read one chapter and then just end it, but um, I have to actually do this. <laughs> so, if this is the first time you've ever encountered a uh, a, a sister or brother, a sister who actually sat down here and read, uh, excuse me, uh, three or more chapters, and um, hi, hi. <laughs> My throat is going to get dry. I'm going to get a dry throat from this, but this is worth it. <laughs> then you're going to think, if it's worth it, then why did you bring the dry throat thing? Listen, I can talk whatever I please, you know? Okay. Shut up. Don't even mention the dry throat. Don't requote me. If you dare. Chapter 36. Then Rot Bazili... Bazali, I can't pronounce some words. Bazali, Lel, and Aho, and Aholib, Aholib, and every wise-hearted man. Excuse me, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work, for the service of the sanctuary, according to all the um, to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bazali, and the Aho, and Aholib. And every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come and unto the work to do it, and they received of Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary, to make it without, and they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people the people and, and they spake unto the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. For the service of the work. For the service of the work. And, wow, uh, okay, sorry, I was just trying to fix my character's head. 
commanded to rest of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor, nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So after they were completely done offering a lot of good stuff, they were like, we're going to have to take a break. Coffee break. Mm -hmm. Well, they're still going to do their works. It's just that they're taking a break. Mm -hmm. Moses was like, okay, cool. Um, you did what you have to do. That's nice. So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was su sufficient for all the work to make it. And too much. <laughs> and every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cher cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth, the bre the breadth of one curtain four cubits. The cu the curtains were all of one size, and he coupled the five curtains one onto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one onto onto another, and he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain. From the salvage and the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost, uttermost side of another current, in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one current, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the current, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one current to another, and he made fifty tatches, tatches of gold, and coupled the currents one unto another with the tatches so it became one tabernacle and he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle eleven curtains he made them the length of one curtain was thirty cubits and four, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain the eleven curtains were of one size and he coupled five currents by themselves and six currents by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the current in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the current which coupleth the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together together, that A may be one and A, that A may be one. And he made a covering for the, for the tents of rams, skins dyed red, and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shit and wood, standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board one cubit, cubit and a half. One board had two, ta two tenons equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. So there were pins. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the si south side, southward. And forty sockets of silver he made, sure. I mean, he made under the twenty boards. So uh, before I continue, I'm reading this. And within the Bible, it explains what the hard work that they're doing and um, just explain to you how long and uh, how many materials they used to make set things that they had to do. So yeah, it was um, it was loads of work <laughs> for you to understand that um, back in, in biblical times, uh, doing work was just it was just there, and um, people actually enjoyed it. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't bad. They did what they had to do. And he made boards of the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south um, side, southward, and forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty, um, under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board. Sorry, my mom, my character's like going that way, like on the right side too much. I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't know why it's uh, reading my character to do that. And forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenions, and two sockets under another board for his two tenions. 
And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the side, the sides of the tabernacle, excuse me, westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle, and the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head, head thereof, to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners, and there were eight boards in their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver. Under every board two sockets. I also apologize if my reading is like, um, I'm not stopping, and it's continuously keep going and going. Um, well, this is how I read at times. Um, when I get into the thing, <laughs> into, uh, what I'm reading. So, uh, I apologize for that. I don't mean it. I'm just, uh, I'm trying to, s within, stop in for, I can take breaks and stuff. But, um, when it comes to reading, I, I just love it. <laughs> and he made bars of shittim, shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle. And five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle. And five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars. And overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen with cherubims, cher, cher, cherubims made he it of cunning work. I think I finally got that word right. Cherubims. Cherubims. I think that's how you pronounce it. And he made thereunto, made ther, thereunto four pillars of sh shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made an hanging for the tabernacle. I didn't like like that on purpose. It's just I'm trying to... <sighs> I don't have water around me, so... <laughs> I'm just going, um... Bit, bit, my, my, you know... <clears throat> saliva. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and the five pillars of it with their hooks... And he overlaid their chapeteers and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass. So now we're in chapter 37. And Bezel made the ark of Shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves onto the rings by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. And he made the mercy, the mercy seats of pure gold, two cubits and a half with the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cher cherubims of gold, beaten out of, out of, one piece made he them, and on the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherub on the end on this side, and one and another cherub on the other side, on the other end on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubs, the cher the cherubims on the on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims spread out their wings. On high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat ward, were the faces of the cherubims. And he made the table of Shittim wood 
two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also he made thereunto a border of an hand breadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast it, he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners and that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table, and he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes and his spoons, and his bowls and his covers, to cover withal, withal of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold of beaten work, made he his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of, out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds, and one branch, a knob, and a flower in three bowls, made like a almonds, and another branch, a knob, and a flower. So throughout the six branches, going out of the candlestick. It's called almond blossoms. And in the, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knobs and his flowers. And a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knobs and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff, snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talons of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And he made the essence altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of, and the breadth of it a cubit, of it, it a cubit. It was four square and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold both the top of it and the sides thereof, round about, and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it without. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy atonian, atonian, I mean, anointing oil, and the pure essence of sweet spices according to the work of the, uh, of the apothecary, apoth, 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 okay, give me a sec, apoth, uh, apothecary, Apothecary, okay? I'm not going to pronounce it anymore because this is a difficult word already. Chapter 38. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shit and wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth, the breadth thereof. And it was four square and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels, and the basins, basins, and the flash hooks, and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made a he of brass. And he made uh, for the altar a bra brassing grate of network, under the com compass thereof, beneath unto the midst of it. Excuse me, is the ledge. 
It, it says latch. And he cast four rings for the um for the four ends of the great of brass. I mean, great of brass. To be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves onto into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it without 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 he made the altar hollow with boards and he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking glass of the women assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation 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 and he made the oh my gosh do not tell me that i've been saying congregation incorrectly the word incorrectly is congregation congregation yeah i have ah no dang it and he made the court on the south side southward the hangings of the court were of the fine twine lining in a hundred cubits the their pillars were twenty and their brass and sockets twenty the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver and for the north side the hangings were an hundred cubits their pillars were twenty and their sockets of brass twenty the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver and for the west side were hangings of five cubits their pillars ten and their sockets ten the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver and for the east side eastward fifty cubits the hangings of the one side of the gates were fifteen cubits their pillars three and their sockets three and for the other side of the court gate on his hand on this hand and that hand were hangings of fifteen cubits their pillars three and their sockets three all the hangings of the court round about were of fine twine linen and the sockets for the pillars were of brass the hooks of the pillars and their la and the fill and their fillers i mean fillets of silver and the overlaying of their cha chapeters chapeters of silver and all the pillars of the court were fill were filleted with silver or banded basically and the hanging for the gates of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twindled linen and twenty cubits was the length and the height and the breadth was five cubits answerable to the hangings of the court and their pillars were four and their sockets of brass four their hooks of silver and the overlaying of their chapeteers and their fillets of silver and all the pins of the tabernacle and the court uh, round about were of brass this is the sum of the tabernacle even of the tabernacle of testimony as it was counted according to the commandments of moses for the service of the Le levites by the hands of Ethamar, son to Aaron, the priest, and Bezil, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Ahol Aholib, the son of Ahi Ahishma, I mean Ahiz Ahizma, Ahizmak, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen a craftsman skillful all the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place even the gold of the offering was twenty and nine talents and seven and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary and the silver of them that were numbered of the congre congregation was in a hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifty shackles after the shackle of the sanctuary. So if you are questioning where the shackles, because I'm reading them right now, or 
Yeah. We're gonna run that right now. Uh, shackles is money. Back in biblical time, that was the money. And you wanna know how much was that, what I just read up? It was actually $38 million. Yeah, that's how much money. <laughs> Dude, this, if you were walking around with that much money now, you would be a millionaire. But they, they just got it easily. That's insane. $38 million, bro. <laughs> a bouquet for every man that is half a shackle after the shackle of the sanctuary for everyone that went to be numbered. From 20 years old and upward for, uh, for 600,000 and 3,550 men. And of the 100 talents of silver, basically they gave him, uh, that was $64. And of the 100 talents of silver were cast, of the, were cast the sockets of the sanctuary. And, wait, sanctuary, yeah. And the sockets of the veil, and hundred sockets of the hundred talents, talents a talent for a socket, and of the thousand seven hundred seventy-five shackles, five shackles, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chep chepiters, chepiters, and filleted them, basically capitals to bond it, and the brass of the offering. Were seven was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shackles, and therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle, of the congregation, and the brazen and the brassen altar and the brassen grate for it, and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of. Of the ta tabernacle and all the pins of the court round about. So that was uh, insane. He that was the materials of the tabernacle. Basically, the tabernacle is um, sorry. I'm I'm reading something because uh, my heart derp self is trying to process all of this reading that I just read. So, excuse me. To put it simple, the tabernacle is a place, uh, if I am correct, now I may be wrong here, this is just going based off my understanding of uh, this entire list of materials and the stuff that he's making himself, I, I believe the tabernacle is an altar, a place for people to worship the, to worship God in. And he's taking his time, he's making all the uh, furniture and all the walls and everything. He's just doing it little by little. I may be wrong. So if I'm wrong, you may quote me on this and actually explain that, no, the tabernacle isn't this. It's actually this. All right? I will also even look into it, too. Because, um, again, um, uh, the, all of this that I'm reading right now, it t I have to take my time to understand what I just read. It's not something they can just, like, digest like that. Because what you can understand right now that... The fact that I just read all of that, you'd be like, oh, what, what, what? But, so, yeah, it, it just takes some time for some people. Other people can get it right off the bat, but I'm one of those people that take my time to understand all of this, uh, all of the stuff that I just read. And it continues on in chapter 39, by the way. It doesn't stop. I really don't want to, like, continue on. I don't want to, like spoil myself because I want to read this on the next day for I can know and whatnot that way I can digest everything. I don't want to continuously um, sp like 
oh, let me just like uh, move the Bible and uh, y you know um, skim through it. That's that's rude. In my eyes, that's just rude. Just take your time. Don't rush. I am taking this advice from Pastor Paul Washer. Pastor Paul Washer, I love him so much. He's a very great man. And uh, honestly, I would love to inspire to be just like him. A sister that is very, that very powerful like him. That's beautiful. I don't want to be a pastor. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that I don't want to be, I want to be a pastor. I'm just saying his, sorry about that. His love for God is so beautiful. It's very beautiful. And I um, honestly applaud him for that. He's a very wonderful man. So I'm taking advice from him because in one of his, uh, in one of his uh, videos, his uh, sermons, he mentions that he reads three chapters a day because the Bible is something that you have to take your time. You really do. For you can understand, digest everything that you just read and everything at all. And take it to heart and take it to serious. It is something very, very, very serious. It's not something you can mess around with. Simple as that. So, that was it for the reading for the Bible. Um, I'm Now that I was reading and thinking as well. Yeah, it, it took me some time. Because reading and digesting everything is doing that trying to multitask and what to do i come to an understand sorry if my head went whack it's in my glasses but um um it's um, come to an understanding that i'm just gonna put this as a separate video that way i can just make upload the gameplay video later on because i need to update pokemon legend arceus and um the other just released so yeah uh, I'm gonna be uploading that video, um, later on. I'm gonna, uh, also I have to edit this video and, uh, making it to HD. I'm not gonna add any effects or anything fancy because this video is extremely long and this will take me hours. I already have another video in my storage unit in which I have to edit completely to make it fluently to watch and view. And I'm not good at editing and all that stuff, video editing like that, with especially with Sony Vegas Pro, it's just a bit overwhelming to me. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm doing this all by myself, so <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit of time. So, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, oopsies, <laughs> I'm glad you guys, uh, if you managed to, came to come all the way up to here and uh, actually listen to me reading the Bible, I thank you, really, seriously. Thank you so much. You guys have no idea how how I am happy that you <laughs> made it this far. Uh, if you um, decided to skim to some of the stuff of me talking and explaining stuff, that's uh, honestly it's your choice. And if you just want to hear me continue to read the Bible, then it's okay. I won't take it too harsh. I mean, like it's your mom, but I just uh, it, it it just it, it's pretty sad. <laughs> it's okay. Um. So thank you all for uh, watching. I will see you guys on the next video, which may be a bit late, depending on what uh, happens. So, uh, see you guys, um, and I'll see you uh, later. Um, also, thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to hit like and subscribe, go right ahead. Your choice or move, not mine's. Bye now.